Let's take a few minutes and talk about the difference between demand and quantity demanded, or supply and quantity supplied. That often causes some confusion early on in the study of supply and demand and shifting the demand curve and the supply curve, okay? The term demand. Every time you hear the word demand, if you'd like to, right behind that word, add the word curve. When we say the demand changes, that means the demand curve changes or shifts. So a change in demand is a shift of the demand curve, all right? If the demand curve increases, that's a shift to the right. If the demand curve decreases, it's a shift to the left. That's a change in demand. The whole curve moves. What about quantity demanded? Well, now we're talking about on a demand curve, when you go from one point on that curve, to another point on that curve, that's a change in the quantity demanded. Demand didn't change. The demand curve didn't shift. This is a change in quantity demanded. What causes that to happen? The supply curve shifts from S1 to S2. That's a change in supply, an increase in supply, which leads to an increase in the quantity demanded. Basically, the increase in supply forces the price down, and at a greater price, people buy more. The quantity demanded increases as the price falls. So when we say there's a change in demand and the whole curve moves, what makes that happen? In our course, we list five forces that shift the demand curve. Remember those? Number of buyers, tastes and preferences, buyers' expectations, a change in incomes, and a change in the price of related goods. Let's, let's show those just for a second. A change in demand. The, the first three are pretty, I think, intuitive. If you have a change in the number of buyers, their tastes or preferences, or their expectations, A change in any one of those, or some of them together, will shift the demand curve. More buyers, increase demand. Fewer buyers, decrease demand. More popular good, increase, you know, more preference for the good, increase demand. Expectations may shift the demand to increase or decrease. It depends on the particular expectations at work. But those are pretty straightforward. The other two are here. So when you have a change in incomes, Okay. When incomes rise, then we have to ask, is this a normal good or is this an inferior good? We've got to know that information. If it's a normal good, most goods are normal goods. As people's incomes increase, their demand for most products increases. And so the Arrows move together. Decrease in demand, I'm sorry, decrease in incomes, decrease in demand. But sometimes, sometimes when incomes increase, people's demand for some products decreases. They buy less of it. Those are what we call inferior goods. Those might be goods like generic products, or ramen noodles is a common example we use, or the meat product spam, is sometimes referred to as an inferior good. When people get more money, they buy less of that because they're going over to buy what they can construe to be better products or more desirable products. And now the fifth factor that shifts the demand curve is the price of related goods. Again, two varieties there. If the price of good A increases and it is a substitute for good B, like Pepsi and Coca-Cola, Chevys and Fords, if the price of Coca-Cola goes up, what will happen to the demand for Pepsi? Well, if the price of Coke goes up, people don't buy it as much, and they move over, and they start buying more of the other good, Pepsi. So an increase in the price of one, leading to an increase in the demand for the other, those goods are substitutes by definition. All right?
right? The arrows move together for substitutes, and this is substitutes in consumption or substitutes on the demand side for buyers, either way. The other alternative is if the price of good X increases and we're looking at good Y, which is a complement. It's a good that you typically buy X and Y together, flashlights and batteries, peanut butter and jelly, milk and cereal. When you buy one, you tend to buy some of the other. Complements. When the price of one good goes up, what happens for its complement? The demand for its complement goes in the opposite direction or decreases. If peanut butter prices went up to $25 a jar for peanut butter, we sure wouldn't need as much jelly, would we? Because we can't afford the peanut butter to go with it. So for complements, the arrows move in opposite directions. Those are the changes in demand. And remember now, a change in demand moves you along the supply curve. Let's take a look at that. If you start out here with your initial equilibrium and there's an increase in demand for one of the five forces changing, okay? We have an increase in demand. Our equilibrium goes from point A to point B. The equilibrium price has risen, right? Price has risen. Sales in the market or equilibrium quantity has increased, right? All those are correct observations. There has been an increase in demand, which has moved you up the supply curve, along the supply curve. When you move along the curve, you have a change in the quantity supplied here. If you move along the demand curve, you have a change in quantity demanded. Here we have an increase in the quantity supplied. That's not an increase in supply. What would be an increase in supply if the whole supply curve moved? Okay? So, conclusion, right? When you have a change in demand, that will lead to a change in the price which will then move you along the supply curve so you'll have a change in the quantity supplied. A change in demand leads to a change in the quantity supplied. You move up or down the supply curve. And so we use the phrase, a change in price does not shift the curve. The price didn't shift the curve, it moved you along the curve. What changed the price was a shift in the curve. The curve shifts, there's a change in the price which moves you along the other curve. Okay. Likewise, if there is a change in supply, that will cause a change in the price in the market, which will move you along what? When the supply curve shifts, you move along the demand curve, so you have a change in quantity demanded. So here, a shift in supply gives you a change in quantity demanded, movement along the demand curve. Not a change in demand, the demand curve didn't shift. And a change in demand, let's say down here, moves you along the supply curve, which is a change in quantity supplied. So a decrease in demand caused the price to fall and a decrease in the quantity supplied. So try to keep those straight. Change in demand, change in quantity demanded. Two different things. Change in Supply, change in quantity supplied, don't get them confused, they're very different. All right? Good.